When you have a product or service to sell, there is a basic cost of that product or service. If you run a bar, you sell drinks, each bottle of liquor has a cost to the bar, each keg of beer has a cost. If you run a hair salon, each service has a cost for the products used in the service, as well as the labor cost of the stylist that performs the service. If you have a construction company, you likely have several cost categories, including labor, materials, rented equipment, owned equipment, and even subcontractors. Each has different cost structures and could yield different rates to the customers. When you're thinking of what price to offer to your customers, you often think in terms of a markup. In these examples, I will be oversimplifying a bit, so forgive me for this. In the bar scenario, if the bottle of liquor costs $25, your shots are about one and a half ounces each, you might get 15 or 16 shots per bottle. The cost per shot to the bar is about $1.60. Knowing this, you think about how much to sell your shots to the customer for. Often you will think in terms of a markup. If you mark up the cost by 200%, then your selling price might be around $5 per shot. If you mark up your cost by only 100%, then your selling price might be around three to 350 per shot. Okay, so far? When you analyze your income statements, you generally do not use markup. You use gross margin. What's the difference? Let me show you. Here are some simple assumptions. One drink costs the bar $1.60. The bar sells it for $5. The gross profit for the one drink is $340. When you calculate the markup, you take the profit divided by the cost times 100. In this case, you get 212.5. Your markup is about 212%. You can check the math by taking the 212.5 times your cost, then add that back to your cost to get $5. The gross margin is found by taking the profit divided by the selling price. In this example, you take the profit of 340 divided by the sell price of $5 times 100, and you get a gross margin of 68%. For each dollar of revenue, you make 68 cents in gross profit. Using this info, suppose the bar sold 5,000 of this same drink during the month and nothing else for the whole month. What shows up on the income statement? You see the revenue of $25,000 cost of $8,000 and a gross profit of $17,000. From this, you can still calculate either the markup or the gross margin. The numbers come out the same as if you only sold one shot. Things become a little trickier when you have more than one cost component in the cost of goods or service that you are selling. Let's take a look at the hair salon for this next example. For a standard haircut, maybe use about a dollar of product Plus, it takes about 30 minutes of your stylist's time. Your stylist makes $25 an hour. And for this example, we will ignore payroll taxes and benefits. The cost to perform the standard haircut is about $12.50 to pay the stylist and the dollar of product used, or $13.50 total. If you think in terms of markup, you might think to mark up the cost of the larger cost component, such as the labor. But do you also apply a markup to the product cost? It can be a little more complicated the more cost components there are. When you think in terms of gross margin, you think about the totals in this situation. You have one price, two cost components, and you have a total cost. Then you have your gross profit. If the hair salon charges the customers $20 for the standard haircut, the gross profit is $650, and the gross margin is 33%. If the salon sold 200 haircuts in a month, the monthly numbers would look like this. If you were to sell the product separately from the service, which a lot of salons do, your markup might be different. In this product example, the salon is not selling a little bit to do one hair job. They are selling a whole container of product. Selling just a squirt or two of product would be silly. Be aware that you may not have a standard markup for your various goods and services. When you sell a bottle of hair gel, the customer may be comparing your price to the price online or at their local Target store. 
This competition will likely cause you to keep your prices lower. So your gross margin and effective markup may be different from selling an individual item to selling a packaged group of items and services. Let's do another scenario. Suppose you have a construction company. Here are your cost components. You have materials, labor, rented equipment, owned equipment, and subcontractors. Your total cost for the job is 11,820. There's a strong likelihood that the markup is very different for each class of cost. When you are analyzing your overall performance, these markups tend to lose some meaning. If you summarize the costs and look at the overall markup, it bears little resemblance to the individual components. So don't bother. Focusing on the earned gross margin helps to better analyze your financial performance. It also takes you a step away from the individual markups. If you think in terms of markup, it is a little more complicated having multiple items to mark up. Of course, you could apply the markup to the total cost. When your banker or investors review your financials, they generally will not do this. They will review the gross margin. Here's the math for this scenario. Something to think about. When you think in terms of markup, you may inadvertently be thinking of your product or service as a commodity, nothing special. Not different than many others that provide similar stuff. Unless your marketing strategy is to be like a commodity dealer, this way of thinking can be detrimental to your sales efforts. You may be inclined to apply a smaller markup than you really could get. You might feel like you are robbing your customers by applying a markup of, let's say, 50%. Remember that you not only need to have a decent price to cover the cost of the product or service, but you also have to have enough left over to cover other costs, such as your rent, utilities, your accountant, or whatever. If you have multiple cost components with different natural markups for each, you could think about the average markup. An unintended consequence is that when you start pricing future stuff, you might just think about the average markup. The components that previously got a higher markup start to get a lower markup. That stuff that got a lower markup might not be able to get the higher overall markup. So you've lowered the high side and you've kept the low side low. Your overall markup and gross margin just suffered. The gross margin and the markup are very related, but many times the way you think about them is different. The result, when you think about where your gross margins are, you will be less likely to move your markups down. When you think about your markups, it is like it used a different section of your brain. You can keep markups high where you can, and improve overall margins. Many times, what you can actually sell your products and services for is based on your competition. If all the other salons are charging $20 to $25 for a similar service, you will likely be stuck in selling for a price in that ballpark, unless you can use marketing to justify a higher price. Perhaps your staff have higher skills. Perhaps you offer beer and wine to your clients. Those differences can come into play when you set your pricing. There is more we can discuss about pricing and marketing, but we will save that for another time. Just remember that markup and gross margin are related, but they're very different. For now, we will end this here. Have a good day.